Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam and this is my May home landscaping walk around uh, video. Uh, not a lot was added this month. I think I probably did maybe 10 or 12 videos here uh, adding things into this landscape. Uh, but there's some other things to talk about uh, as we go around. I thought I had lost my first plants in this uh, landscape redo, but I have some leaves about that long. I'll, I'll show you uh, in a minute. But I did think that I had lost uh, one piece over the winter, but I'm still uh, batting a thousand so far in this landscape redo. I'll lose something at some point. Uh, almost certainly I've put something somewhere. It's not going to be happy. And uh, that's the way of uh, that's the way these things go and you actually learn from those things. It'll happen eventually, but so far I'm doing okay. Uh, so let's get started on the walk around. I'm going to start on the northeast side of my yard. My turf is tall intentionally. I'm putting out some centipede grass seed next week and I'm going to scalp this lawn off a couple times between now and then. Um, just lower the mower two times and use that um, wheat uh, as it as it fades as a mulch for that centipede seed. Centipede seed's very expensive. I've got a chance for rain early next week and I want to take advantage of that and I definitely don't want to waste that seed. It's it's over $200 for five pounds of centipede uh, retail. Uh, these uh, plum ewes are absolutely beautiful. These Utopia plum ewes, uh, they're starting to put on some new growth here and I'm going to extend that line up a little further and then I'm going to start with some boxwoods the rest of the way up eventually. This Japanese snowbell is interesting. Uh, the absolutely beautiful flowers on this. This is going to just be a beautiful tree over here, but it didn't fare as well in this super cold winter as I would have hoped. Um, the top of it definitely died up here, but now that I know where it's coming out from right there, I'll just cut this right just above that. That's all I've got to do to clean this up. And uh, the rest of the tree looks great right there. Everything over here in this corner, this magnolia and uh, that West Coast laurel that I put over there look very good. This uh, Kwanzaa cherry here has got to be limbed up. Um, I need to get it where, you know, maybe it's up right in here. So that's a job that needs to be done. There's an oak leaf hydrangea right here. That was a video from uh, last fall and it's budded up. It's going to be beautiful. I've got another one going in right there. The hole's already dug and that's a video I'm going to shoot and I'm putting in a different variety right there. And if these were close together, like if I was going to do a cluster of them right through here, I would have used all the same variety. But if I used two different varieties like that, um, spaced apart, in all likelihood one or the other is going to bloom later every year and extend the period of time I'll have flowers over here. But it, this thing's super, super happy in this uh, dappled shade over here. These camellias I didn't show on the last uh, walkthrough video. These are white uh, camellias that I had put in last fall. They had really taken a lot of damage, and uh, but they're coming out vigorously now. So those three look great. And the three that I had planted up against the wall over there were also damaged. They were planted in the fall. Um, great time to plant woody shrubs here, but didn't know the winter would have been quite what it was, but uh, they're all, all six coming back to life pretty quickly now. This uh, weeping red bud is still quite beautiful there. Uh, one thing we missed, well, I'll back up here. This uh, snowball viburnum is almost finished blooming. I did put that in this month and put that video up. This is a, an Eastern snowball or a European snowball bush right there. Uh, my uh, Mount Airy Father Gilla, right here. Uh, they bloomed during the month. I did take a couple pictures of those. Uh, this just has the, the most beautiful bluish green foliage, which I know will not show up in this video, but this is just one of my favorite plants. I'm going to bring the path, a path through here that comes between this uh, weeping cherry and these three and heads down through here and around and back up, weaving through these trees and back over to this path that I have right there. There is going to be a a logical way through this white garden as it develops over time, but not a lot was done over here. These pansies here have just been fantastic, but um, that upper 80 degree weather we got last week definitely, um, they definitely took a hit uh, last week. And you can see if you get down in here that the bottom of them are starting to brown out a little bit. So it'll be time to replace these. I am not going to put this big giant annual bed next to my driveway. Um, I've ended up with a third car sometimes sitting right here and they just were blocked out. So this annual bed is going to move up to there 
and I believe I'm going to put some white flowering things here that will work uh, to get pollinators here, some things to get butterflies and bees and that kind of thing. That's my plan for this space. And like I say, the new annual bed will move up there and there's, um, there's some purple flowers going in, even though it's the white garden. I have a lot of material here um, in a couple different spaces to, uh, to be putting in on projects and some stuff at the garden center as well. Up here, this is the plant I almost lost. This Ralston viburnum that's right here, and I hope you can see this, has one or two or three little leaves coming out from the center of it. I haven't cut that one back yet. Uh, these two came out earlier and uh, I cut them back already and I cleaned up these white wedding hydrangeas. They're gonna be nice, but that thing is alive. Um, I'll go ahead and cut it back to that point now. I get this question a lot. When a plant gets damaged and it's clearly gonna be smaller than the others, whether or not you should go ahead and replace it. Um, I'm gonna give it time. I'm gonna give it time and I can hold these back a little bit. And you know, if, it's, if it appears by summer that this thing's gonna take off and be vigorous, I'll definitely keep it. Um, if not, I'm, I might consider replacing it. But that is a question that comes up uh, pretty frequently about whether to replace something or not. And I, it's really up to your patience uh, as to whether or not. I, I'm pretty patient and, and it may be interesting just to see if I can you know, get them fully caught up this year. My uh, autumn lily uh, azaleas bloomed pretty heavily and uh, still have a few uh, flowers on them. They were quite nice there and that annual bed will go in right next to it right there. My hellebores are still blooming nicely even when it's almost 90 degrees. These are those autumn twist encore azaleas I planted in the fall and I said this was my favorite one and it's been, they've been blooming most of the month since I shot that last video and there's a few, few flowers left on them. They'll bloom again in the summer and again in the fall and uh, every flower is kind of different on this plant. Really quite beautiful. Here's some annuals that I have going uh, into that white garden bed over there. This is a, uh, this is jams and jelly blackberry vinca and it's almost black. It's really, really beautiful. Uh, there's a clematis flower, that Jack Mania clematis is Got a few flowers coming up, open on it. And this is some uh, fan flower or scaviola here that I'm gonna use in front of this vinca. And I've got a couple other things going in there as well. Uh, everything in this bed that I did this little series of five videos on, everything in here looks great. Uh, the heuchera is uh, growing like crazy, really, really kind of faster than heuchera typically grows. Like in, like in that spot. That spot's also well drained because it just drops right away um, you know, it's probably six inches, you probably can't tell, about six inches above this concrete. That may be what's helping with that. They, do not, they don't like wet feet. Uh, hosta's coming up great. These other hellebores are looking nice. I did these annual plantings the other day. I did a little bit of mowing here, so it didn't look quite so bad around my stuff. But you can see up there, it's, the grass is very tall on purpose. Uh, annuals went in here and over here in a video the other day. but. Everything up here is looking good. Holly and I went on a long walk this morning, so she's sleeping that off. These baby gem boxwoods are looking good. And this shrub and perennial planting that I did in these containers, everything perennial except for those begonias, uh, uh, looks great in this space. When I replaced this sidewalk, which I hope that happens probably in the fall, I'm actually gonna come out to here and make this wider like this so that these container plantings end up sitting on a, a brick or whatever I'm gonna do here. And this will just be a kind of a half circle here. I did most of the planting over here since the last video. There's this Japanese maple in this container that may have already been there. There's a dwarf pittosporum or right here. And there's, these are lemon lime nandinas right here. And I've left a space here. Don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. Still uh, thinking that one over, uh, crepe myrtle has come out here. This is actually a dwarf purple crepe myrtle. You can't tell it's a dwarf because it's six feet tall, but um, it doesn't get a whole lot taller than that for it, before it starts blooming. These are inkberry hollies right here and uh, around over here that have been here for a very long time. And these can be limbed up into small trees if you want to. Uh, I'm probably gonna take these down a little bit more and try to get some growth down in the bottom on mine, but they can be tree formed if you want to. That's an inkberry holly and that's a native to the eastern U.S. right there. Got the vegetable garden in the other day. 
when these trees came down back here, it created a big giant space. And uh, I've been struggling to figure out what to do with it, but I think now I know that I'm actually going to build some sort of fence along the back of my vegetable garden in this little blueberry area right here. And I've got an idea of what I'm gonna use for that. On the other side of it will be a compost bin of which I'm already stacking stuff up for it right there. I took those trees down to get more sun over here, but this maple that's right here, that limb right there, and the limb right here that's a little bit lower is shading out these three blueberries on this side. It's early morning now, so everything's shaded over here, but um, even during the middle of the day, these three blueberries have a little shade on them. So I'm gonna take that skinny little maple out and uh, it'll actually help me with this Dawn Redwood. This Dawn Redwood is too close to these other trees. So I think it'll help it out as well. But I need to take that tree down before I build whatever fence that I'm gonna put across here. I'm gonna walk you up and show you the things that have gone in on this line this month. I've actually shot a couple videos that I haven't edited yet. Um, these are deciduous azaleas right here that are just beautiful. Uh, orange uh, and orangey yellow azaleas. Um, that video will be up hopefully in the next few days. Uh, that's that Don Egoff red bud. Look at the foliage on this thing. Look how beautiful that is. It's really just an amazing foliage on that. Uh, that's a viburnum we did a video for. You see all these saplings coming up right here. This will always happen. If you come in and cut trees down, any weed seed that was in this area is gonna to try to germinate immediately. And so that's gonna be a struggle for a little while to keep everything um, cut down over here. But over time, uh, I'll have it mulched and uh, I'll get control of it. There's a, that viburnum right there is beautiful, that Cree viburnum. It's just great foliage. Look how pretty that is. Just a great plant. But all of these things are gonna get pretty good sized um, just trying to create a soft border across here. This is a evergreen dogwood. And I've shot that video. This plant right here, man, is it beautiful. Um, I can't wait to put that video up and let you guys see that plant. Here is a sweet Betsy right here that was planted, calicanthus. Beautiful, it still has a couple residual flowers on it, but the foliage is just beautiful on that. And my uh, autumn bonfire azaleas bloomed this past month. They were in full bloom when I shot the deciduous azalea video for the deciduous azaleas up there. So you'll get to see those, how they looked in full bloom at that time. Here's the salvia and agapanthus. I shot this video and got it up last month. As these stalks on these agapanthus fade, you can go down here to the bottom and cut these. And right here is a new one that's gonna be taking its place. But uh, all of these need to be trimmed back at this point. I did a video about pruning plants when you put them in the ground to keep them from wilting. That video went up uh, about a week and a half ago maybe, or shot about a week and a half ago. And already this thing is completely covered in new growth from me cutting them off. And uh, they'll be back in full bloom pretty soon. And definitely will not require as much water going forward. Over here are these obsession nandinas that were planted last fall. Really beautiful new growth coming out on these. Uh, and they'll be this color the entire summer once that gets going. And they'll hopefully quickly block this air conditioning unit out. This area in my backyard back here is gonna stay fescue, so I have mowed it. And I put fescue seed out on it once already. We just haven't really gotten any rain. I think I'm gonna to have to turn on the irrigation and get these heads working properly. I typically don't irrigate um, very much with this uh, backyard part of my irrigation system because it usually stays pretty wet. But I think I need to get this seed germinated sooner than later. This river birch right here, which is big and beautiful, will always shade out this area of this turf um, by mid-afternoon every day. This cryptomeria is covered in new growth, even down at the uh, very bottom, it's covered in new growth, so it won't look so uh, weird pretty soon. This uh, greenhouse is uh, not far from not far from getting started on that in the next um, couple weeks. This will definitely go in and get that project underway. This uh, sweet box uh, looks good. It's got some new growth on it. It's been blooming for, I don't know, a month or a month and a half. These cast iron plants need to be pruned back. 
uh, all of these leaves that are tattered like this need to come off, but I wait until I see a lot of new growth. And down here at the bottom of this one, I've got a piece there, uh, and uh, there's another one right there. As soon as I see a bunch of those coming up to replace these tattered ones on the top, I'll uh, cut those back. And they'll look much better when we do a walkthrough video in June. Uh, they'll be very, very fresh looking. My uh, Mahonia here, this is a regular Mahonia Belii. It's just covered in new growth, it's very spiky new growth. And I think everything in this corner is looking great. This uh, Pieris has just never stopped blooming. <laughs> I don't know when, we, when that thing went in. I, I have to look up when that video went up. I mean, that may be three months, two and a half months of flowers. These uh, Marvel Mahonia you can see, which were blooming in the last two walk around videos, uh, now have the berries forming on them. Lots and lots of berries. All three of them have that. The soft caress Mahonia has started to put on some new growth. So that looks great. And these olive martini Eliagnus are starting to uh, wake up here with some new growth. And they'll go from this probably to this in between the next two uh, videos. Although I need to get some water on them because it's much, much drier than it should be. I think this uh, mountain snow Pieris went in this month. I'm gonna have a path that comes in through that gate right there. It just follows where my finger's going, right around here. I've got a video perhaps going up tomorrow that's a lot of shade perennials. Some of those things sitting on my driveway in way too much sun right now are actually shade perennials. They're gonna go around this Elysium right here and uh, some of this area right over here is going to get a batch of shade perennials. The garden center definitely kept me busy uh, last month. I think I have a lot more time going forward in May. I've already put up several more videos than I started off putting up last month. So uh, lots of projects to do here. The yard looks great, and I don't know if that comes through in the video uh, necessarily. It looks fantastic, uh, uh, but it's, there's a lot of things left to do, and there's just a ton of pieces I want to put in. And I really just haven't done much in that white garden other than put in what I call the bones. And by bones, I mean the large growing shrubs and flowering trees and the things that will be substantial in that space. Those are the things that I put in first. And I used to do that on some landscape jobs, you know, for, for customers is just get them started, you know, with the bigger pieces and the and those things and then let them fill in later if they were interested in doing that. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this video and a lot of content coming up here uh, this week and uh, over the next three or four weeks uh, as we get through May. Thank you very much for watching.